So it's 1 p.m. So let's start today. And um, welcome to the well, ANOC and the Toolbox workshops. Um, it's step seven from the sustainability handbook. It's the workshop number four of a series of five. So we are more than over half of, of, of the workshops, which is a bit sad on a one way, but on the other, it's it's great to see that we have progressed already so much. And, and today we will we have a very, very interesting topic today, which is the tracking. So it will be more on numbers, uh, which I like personally uh, very much. So just a few housekeeping rules. I mean, feel free to write any question you have anytime in the chat, uh, or you can raise your hand and we can uh, give you the floor. Uh, if you have the camera on, then we can highlight you for everybody to see you. And if it's switched off, then, then we cannot highlight you. Um, please remember that there is translation or interpretation services available. So on the bar icon on the bottom, there is a globe icon or a world icon, and you can click there and well, select between English, French, and Spanish. Uh, if you want to hear the floor and, and if somebody speaks in Spanish, you can you can uh, yeah, keep, keep it also uh, off the interpretation services. Uh, just a small indication on the breakout groups. So since the French breakout group and the Spanish breakout groups were small groups and we want to enrich uh, a bit more the exchange that you have, uh, we will have the French speakers. I will assign them with Ingrid. I mean, she also speaks, I mean, I don't know if she's native, but fluently French. <laughs> and uh, I will put, if you're a Spanish speaker with Gustavo along some English speakers. So, I mean, feel free to speak in the language uh, you want us as the hosts of the breakout groups will be able to understand you and, and interact with you. So without further ado, I pass over, I hand the floor to Isaac or to Damien if he's here, but yeah. Yeah, I think I'm here guys, so. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, thanks Andre. And yeah, it is quite, it's really cool to have everyone with us again for another session and uh, two more to go. Um, so just, I think everyone's familiar with uh, with who we are so far, um, to, so far but um, I'm Damien Foxall, I'm the Sustainability Program Manager um, uh, with my colleague Amy Monroe and Isaac, Isaac Murray, who's the Toolbox Community Manager for, uh, for the Toolbox uh, and will be, um, you know, is really your point for um, anything relating to the Toolbox. Uh, and we're also joined by Ingrid uh, Butler from Butler International Sports. Um, and most importantly, you know, our role here really is as a platform is to elevate and to highlight the work that everyone on this call is doing uh, to provide a platform to ask those questions um, and maybe get some answers from your peers. Uh, and so that's our role. And I think we're all learning on this process. It's really very rich. Um, on the next slide, of course, underpinning all of this is the um, UNFCCC standards, the United Nations Sports for Climate Action Framework. So maybe just moving to the next slide there, Andre. Um, so that's really the standard that underpins all of the actions that we are aligning with as a sporting sector. Um, it, it's thinking about systemic efforts. It's thinking about climate change and action, uh, responsible so, uh, sourcing and, and consumption, uh, and of course, ad advocating for action through communication. Um, through all of this work, um, you know, we've looked at the environmental, social, and economic aspects of sustainability. Uh, it's a very diverse, and you know, it's a it's a, it's a huge uh, range of topics that each uh, will be looking at individually from their own perspectives. Uh, but here today, we're going to be thinking about how we track our progress as we uh, as we progress, and we're going to take a specific focus on climate action. How do we calculate our carbon footprint and the tools that we can use and the resources available to do that? While we're focusing on climate action and carbon footprint, 
uh, I will just make the point here and others will say this as we go along. It is not just about carbon footprint. We should track and, uh, and, and measure our progress and all of our targets, whether they're social, environmental, um, or, or economic, uh, but just as an example, and it's a topic, of course, we really want to focus on through the climate action here is how do we calculate our carbon footprint? Um, so just give you a little bit of background on that. Uh, so without further ado, uh, again, over to Amy, who's just going to introduce exactly what the toolbox is, where it came from, and then off to Isaac uh, to dig into these tools. Yeah, hi everyone. So just a quick recap for anyone um, who might be here for the first time, um, a little bit about the background of the toolbox. Um, so in, two, in 2020, 11th Hour Racing Team founded the toolbox, um, creating a sort of an accessible step-by-step -step set of resources to support organizations um, of any sector really to establish a, a sustainability program. It's based on international sustainability standards and it provides a set of guides, templates and case studies to walk you through the process. Um, and it's available for free on the Creative Commons platform based on the ethos that when we share, everyone wins. And the value of the toolbox is really in all of you, the community that um, uses it, maintains it, feeds back on, its, on how effective it is. Um, it's now available in English, French and Spanish and soon with the support of uh, Cabo Verde NSC and the IOC Olympic Solidarity Fund um, will be available in Portuguese as well. So we'll be exploring some of the tools. So yeah, just make sure you registered, downloaded the assets in step seven. Um, so if I'm going to go to the next one there, yeah. So um, these are all the documents that sit within the toolbox. Um, today we'll be focusing on step seven um, and the outcome will be to address the topic of monitoring progress against targets and specifically to start understanding how to go about measuring our carbon footprints. As we go along, please feel free to drop any questions into the chat. I will be monitoring them and, um, and we'll be managing the Q&A sessions at the end. So with that, I'll hand over to Isaac. Thank you very much, Amy. And uh, yeah, welcome back, everyone. Uh, once again, it's a pleasure to speak with you all this afternoon. And uh, yeah, happy Valentine's Day. I hope you're all feeling the love today. Maybe a bit of love for our planet too. Um, but yeah, it's great to see you all again. Um, so in the last webinar uh, on step six, we looked at how we can produce a sustainability plan, uh, creating initiatives to mitigate the issues that we identified in step four and to work towards the targets that we set in step five. So today we will be looking at how we can obtain and track data on our organization's activities and how to calculate a carbon footprint to help us make reductions month by month. So the principle of that is pretty simple. It's that if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. If you can't measure it, you can't make reductions. So let's take running, for example. You know, after Christmas, I ate few too many mince pies and that meant that my 10k time increased by a lot um week by week i've been assessing how long that run takes and trying to reduce the time it takes for each run and these days you know training for athletes worldwide has become easy with the help of tracking and performance tools like the one you see in the slide um you can track anything like planet times day i like that <laughs> you can track everything from um blood pressure, pace, um, even your hydration levels. But we're hoping that these tools um, will help you to be able to track your carbon and to be able to make informed decisions on how you're gonna phase down your emissions, your consumption, and all your impacts that you set target, targets for. So to get going, let's have a look at our quick guide. Um, once you've planned out and start to deliver the initiatives from step six, this quick guide gives you an overview of the things that you should be doing to undertake three key activities for assessment. The first activity is measuring progress by gathering data relevant to all your targets and applying industry standard procedures to your data processing. You should then compare your results against your targets and perform internal assessments and audits to realize how you can grasp deficits and the surpluses that you might have to stay on track. And lastly, you will evaluate and react. 
You'll assess your internal performance by conducting a management evaluation and address any non-compliance issues that you have. Remember, it's best to address trends in non-compliance as soon as they start to show in your data. Often these issues can be codependent and interlinked. So by addressing the most prevalent issues that you see first, this can have impacts on others further down the line. So in this step to do so, we have a comprehensive selection of trackers to help you track your resource and material consumption. The assets in step seven include the quick guide that we've just been through, the how-to guide and case studies, and 11 tracker templates to contribute to effective and credible reporting. So in this web webinar today, we'll be only looking at two of those uh, templates. That is the climate action tracker and the carbon emissions calculator. Um, but feeding into that last one, Carbon Emissions Calculator, we have several quantitative trackers that take into account consumption, such as our travel tracker, our materials tracker, our shipping tracker, and a host of others. Supporting these trackers for assessing environmental sustainability, there are also KPI trackers, human resource, uh, like quality and diversity trackers, and an internal audit trackers to ensure that your meeting social and economic sustainability too. Again, there are pointers on how to ensure that your tracking is compliant with the Sports for Climate Action Pledge through our handy sustainability handbook. This is available on the ANOC website. And I believe if you haven't got it already, Amy should be entering a link in the chat now. Um, so moving on to our next slide. Thanks, Amy. Um, Yes, we will. So we'll leave you to explore those um, extensive range of trackers at your own pace. But as I say today, we'll be looking at how to use the two carbon based trackers to meet the Sports for Climate Action net zero pledges. So simply put, we use the trackers to record our activity year on year, reporting cycle by reporting cycle, and then match that to our sustainability program. Um, we take the data that we have uh, month after month or any specified interval that you make, plug them into the carbon calculator. And by putting in those data, we get a carbon footprint. So to do this, we must use the trackers to document all of our information from our operational activities, monitor progress towards targets and goals, and store data um, for clear analysis and reporting purposes. When we put this data into the carbon calculator, we'll obtain a comprehensive overview of our emissions scopes one, two, and three. Now, if you're not sure what scopes one, two, and three is, um, or three are, the carbon calculator um, has that outlined, and we'll go into it a little bit later. Um, our carbon calculator uses factors that are outlined by the UK government to work out how much carbon emissions each activity uses. And this is updated year by year. Um, our newest update will be available towards the middle of 2023 in June. Um, but you can change these carbon factors relevant to your own country or your own sector if you wish. Uh, and that should make a bit more sense when we go into the, into the tool shortly. Um, next slide, please. Um, oh, by shortly, I mean now. Um, so yes, before we go into the breakout rooms, we're going to do something a bit different. Um, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to talk you through how our carbon calculator works. So you can get an understanding on how to use it. It's very simple to use uh, with a bit of direction. So um, I'm going to share my screen now and hopefully you will be able to see what I am seeing. Yeah. Okay, so can everyone see that? Okay, brilliant. Yeah. So this is the carbon calculator. Um, it's your one-stop dashboard to work out your carbon footprint. The tool is designed to be a dashboard to make it easier to synthesize all of that data into one carbon footprint. You won't need to change any data on this page specifically. Um, all we need to do 
is insert our operational data in the tabs below. And that brings up a cumulative total of carbon uh, in these tabs here. Uh, so we'll go through a little worked example now. Um, but in, just to show you how this dashboard works, in column A, we have listed all the tracking activities and color coded them by scope one, two, and three. So just to quickly recap on the scopes. Uh, according to the Carbon Trust, scope one emissions cover direct emissions from owned or controlled sources, such as the fuels you might use on site at some of your events. Scope two emissions cover indirect emissions from the generation of purchased electricity, heating and cooling, uh, those kind of things um, on your electricity use in your offices. And scope three includes all other indirect information uh, all other indirect emissions that occur in your organization's value chain, so such as travel and flights. Uh, and this also includes a measurement for well to tank, WTT here. And well to tank means that you are assessing the emissions that are made by transporting fuels to your point of use. Um, and this is uh, a, a criteria of scope three. We've also left in rows 41 and 42 areas for you to define your own carbon tracking for extra things you want to track carbon on um so this is month a month by month uh tracking of your missions um again you'd be able to see month by month uh what what they are Column N and O here will come up with your totals for the year, and that will be a total kilogram CO2 emitted, CO2 emitted and total tons of CO2 emitted, uh, and these will inform your reporting further down the line. Your total for the whole year as well will be down here, and we also have some graphs to facilitate the analysis of data once the data is filled in. So how do we get these numbers? Well, using the trackers and your own internal processes, you'll collect data on your organization's activities. The carbon calculator then uses decimal factors, like I say, produced by the UK government to work out what those emissions are. Uh, you'll be able to find the emissions factors at the bottom of each tab. So let's take, for example, uh, producing electricity say for example i am the uk noc and i'm producing um and i have the electricity for my office so let's say for example in january you take 500 kilowatts from the national grid um the uk government will so you'd you would add the activity your electricity use and then you would add for january what your consumption was now at the bottom of the um at the bottom of the tool you have the factor which is how much kilograms of co2 is emitted per kilowatt used so we'll take that carbon factor and we will put it into where the relevant line is and then we have a number here for how much kilogram how many kilograms of co2 were emitted for our, our electricity use in January. The great thing about the carbon calculator is once you, as, as you go along and you fill in these different tabs, it then all feeds in to the original dashboard here. So you will then get a data, you'll then get data on how much of a proportion of your carbon footprint is from that one activity. And it will also show in the graphs below. Uh, I hope that makes a little bit more sense of how it works. Um, like I say, these are U UK uh, greenhouse gas conversion factors. So for electricity, you might want to use your own um, nation's car uh, carbon factors. Um, but they are comprehensive, the uh, ones that are produced by DEFRA. And um, that's why we chose them. These are also... Um, the tabs at the bottom are also color coded. So your scope one is green, 
your scope two is blue and your scope three is red, just as they are on the dashboard. Um, at the final tab as well at the bottom has conversion factors to help you change from imperial to metric. If uh, there is a carbon factor that is, is still an imperial, or if you have measurements that are in imperial and they need to be changed to metric. Um, I hope that overview gives a little bit of example of how carbon tracking works using our data and using the way we uh, track our incomings and outgoings. I think Damien has a small caveat to make uh, about functionality and uh, responsibilities of the user. Are you still with us, Damien? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, nice one, Isaac. That's really great. Um, so, you know, as you can see, I mean, when you, when you start, start thinking about calculating um, any in aspect of an inventory, especially for a larger organization, your spreadsheets and data will quickly pile up, um, uh, covering possibly multiple spreadsheets. Uh, and the intention is that that data, whether it's um, uh, the amount of kilometers driven by your organization, maybe you're measuring your fans and followers travel, all of that will be collated in, on a tracker that you or a series of trackers that you will have on your side. Uh, and the calculator recovers all of that information um, and um, and calculates it. I don't, I don't know if you can just quickly screen share again, but the very first tab of that calculator, and in actual fact, you'll find it in all of the templates from the toolbox, uh, but this is especially important here. There's obviously multiple uh, opportunities for user error. Uh, and uh, so as with any data uh, wrangling, um, it's very important that um, uh, you know a, a careful level of due diligence is applied, um, looking for those small errors, misplaced decimal points, um, you know kilograms instead of tons, uh, which will immediately produce an error factor of a thousand. Um, all of these opportunities for error exist in any process that you go through. Uh, but the very first tab here just mentions that you know just um, in terms of. Um, in terms of due diligence, be very careful um, for those uh, for where those errors may exist. Uh, try to um, double check and cross check your spreadsheets, um, copy and paste where possible, and look for those errors. Uh, the simple ones, for instance, uh, kilograms and tons, uh, or um, you know, um, uh, you know, tons per kilometer, kilograms per kilometer, um, and uh, just be careful. Um, and this is probably where it's quite important to have a second or even third party audit to uh, come through and double check your work as a minimum, obviously have a colleague, um, you know, look over your shoulder and, you know, pass the spreadsheets back and forth. Um, but yeah, thank you, Isaac. Maybe we can dig into it as a breakup. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so if you could uh, share the presentation again, Andres, thank you. Excellent, so just on the next slide, just to sort of refresh on why we're taking this data, you know, why do we need to know our carbon footprint? Um, what is the process, you know, how do we reduce it? Why, how do we, how do we go about finding these numbers, looking at them and cutting them down again? So whatever sector you're in, um, the process is, the same is to plan, implement, review, and adapt. So going through this process and examining your data related to your carbon emissions and other forms of consumption will sharpen your focus on what your top priorities are on how to make those reductions. You should have planned your initiatives and the roadmap in step six. And then as you implement those initiatives, you record the outcomes and compile the data in the trackers. You will then review the data by conducting regular assessments and these evaluations that you make in your carbon calculator will empower you to make adaptations to your strategy to your organization and provide accountability per activity for uh, their completion so these should be done as the carbon calculator says on a monthly uh, basis but you can adapt the carbon calculator to do them if you track on uh, different a different cycle um but enough uh talking from me i think now it's time to do the practical portion of the webinar so as usual we're going to divide you into smaller groups and send you into the breakout rooms uh, and we're going to give you 
sort of 14, 15 minutes um, to go through the carbon calculator template and try and calculate the carbon emissions for an economy class flight from Seoul to Geneva in October. So for this calculation, you'll see when you get in there that there is the choice to use the RF method or not. And RF stands for radiative forcing, which is just, it just means that you're including the calculations of the additional emissions made by airplanes moving through the sky. So we'd always want to try to include radiative forcing if we can. Um, so after this breakout session, we'll begin discussing how you made your calculations. Uh, and we'll have debate and we'll have some space to discuss uh, more capabilities or questions of the calculator if you still have some. Um, and please bear in mind these are just these exercises are just to get you started with the templates. You can always put your data in or play around with them after the workshop. So each breakout room will have a facilitator with instructions on making this calculation. So if you're stuck, please feel free to ask questions, engage in the conversation and share your thoughts as you try and make that calculation. So without further ado, Andres, if you could put into the breakout rooms, that'd be great. Welcome back. I see everyone arriving back in the space. Um, so I guess let's um, kick off by seeing if anybody had any interesting uh, viewpoints. Did we find it easy? Did we find it difficult? What were the sort of things that we, you know, we wanted to know more about. Um, did anybody have any interesting discussions about the scope of our uh, emissions tracking? Um, do we have any volunteers? I know in our group, we reworked another example um, and did a, a different flight from uh, London to Dubai. We worked out the total carbon emissions for that. Um, and I think once you actually get into the the reads of it and you start to play around with this tool, you can really see how it informs the wider um, template at the beginning, the wider dashboard um, and recording, well, when you record your emissions uh, year on year. Um, we did have a question as well um, about the different activities in the sectors. Um, it's important to note that if, you know, you will have identified what activities your organization undertakes in steps um, four, five, and six. So it's important to keep your carbon tracking relevant to those activities. Um, for example, refrigerants, um, we might not use a lot of refrigerants in our events or but if you've if you specified that in your activities and if you um, explore and identify that that might be something you need to track, then of course that's um, something that you might want to track. Did anybody have any other questions in the breakout rooms? Just um, one quick question um, in our group around um, if, if we have a, if um, users have a go at uh, inputting data. Um, playing around with the tool, can we then come back to you to check it and see how we've gone on? Um, so I was just saying how, uh, yeah, everyone's uh, able to book in an hour slot with Isaac and he can run you through, check if there's a, you know, help look and see if there are any formatting or formula errors and things like that and just support you a little bit there. Yeah, for sure. And again, I think um, just to signpost the um, Olympic solidarity for being as well that you can um, have a and sustainability consultant come in and use these tools uh, and do this process um, alongside um, your organization as well um, and they will be able to speak with me and figure out um, how that might look for your organization. Ingrid. Um, thank you Isaac. So just a, a, a an important point in the sense is that the transport, the example you provided, um, it is the most important area. It's where typically in sport and particularly for the NOCs, you have the greatest impact. So knowing how to master at least that 
page and understanding that one, it will make a big difference in how you can define your reduction strategy later on, how you can actually reduce. So we just encourage everyone to really start using that particular one on, on travel um, and just really going into details. And then maybe a small point for the toolbox would maybe to color code at the bottom of the page so that we can clearly see if it's a UK flight, you know, non-UK international, because it's sometimes a wee bit con confusing. Um, it might just make it simpler to read as well, because we had some discrepancies. But thank you. I can I can maybe just come on that one for um, Ingrid. So actually, the um, those factors come directly from the uh, UK death risk spreadsheet as published, um, and they're literally copy and pasted directly into the the toolbox calculator as Isaac described. Um, so um, as it is right now, the formatting is directly from that spreadsheet, um, which ensures there's no errors in our copy and paste and updating of those factors each, each year. Um, so, but um, maybe at a later stage, if we end up with a web based tool, we could consider something like that. Uh, the way the factors work right now, as Isaac described, is it really is the ability for any user to see exactly what factors used, where it comes from, and to update it for your national or sector specific um, needs. Uh, with regards to um, reviewing um, the, the way organizers, uh, organizations are using the toolbox for supporting the initial um, kind of progress, we can, Isaac is certainly available to do that. Uh, we are not, however, an auditing service. Um, and I think at that stage, we would be thinking more about um, uh, referring you to a, a consultant um, or maybe even back to an open the IOC uh, for their own solidarity fund um, and uh, for you to find a specialized consultant. Excellent. Thanks, Damien. Um, I think we do have a question in the comments about whether we can use the toolbox for accreditation. Um, if you wanted to, if there was a certain accreditation or um, yeah, award that you were trying to go towards, you would identify that in um, step four. When you do that, you would then outline which part of which parts of that accreditation are part of your issues, which issues do you need to rectify to get that accreditation. And then going through the process, you can include the um requirements of what you're trying to achieve in steps four five six and then use step seven to track how you are achieving those targets um, perhaps we can go into a little bit more detail on how that would be possible in the q a session um, so we'll come back to that question but um just looking at time um i think we should move on to our next template if that's okay. Okay, fantastic. So, um, yeah, assessing our and understanding, you know, where we are at as an organization helps us to build on our past achievements and create new successes. And this is what we would sort of look at as our climate legacy. Similarly, in the Olympic realm, after events or cycles or seasons, we um, evaluate our successes in that cycle by sporting achievement, of course. However, with carbon counting, we need to look long term and judge how our actions this year or this cycle or this four years lead into our larger strategy. So what can we do to repurpose or change our existing ideas and assets or initiatives to reach our overall, overall goals and targets. So the picture here is from the Olympic Park uh, for London 2012. Uh, this stadium that you see in picture was built to a modular design. And after the games, a tier of seating was removed for the stadium to be repurposed as the West Ham Football Club um, home ground. And as well as this, uh, an, an ecological restoration and greening project in the Olympic Park contributed to the large scale urban regeneration um, of the Lee Valley, um, which is where the um, Olympic National Park 
the the Olympic Park is. Um, this brought a myriad of ecosystem services um, because of the Olympic Games. And the story is similar in so many cities. I live in Barcelona, it's very prominent here. Um, successes of the Olympic Games aren't just measured by sporting achievements, but the lasting legacy. So that's how we should see our sustainability programs as continuous non-linear processes that can change and be re-evaluated far beyond the initiatives that you undertake. Sustainability shouldn't be just initiative after initiative. It should be an evolving, changing focus of your operation whilst um, yeah. monitoring what your positive impacts are. And our next tool is about how you can track that. So this next tool is our Climate Action Tracker template. This template allows you to zoom out, combine all of your data strategy performance from the year on year, sorry, from the year to a more year on year um, macro view of your sustainability program. So here, like I say, we copy the data over from the carbon calculator and record the initiatives we made to make reductions and impacts, and we'll be able to see our position on the pathway to net zero. It's intended to be updated annually alongside your sustainability plan, and it can be used to demonstrate to external auditors or certifiers or accreditors that you understand and are in control of reducing your climate impact to the standard that you seek to achieve or that you are seeking to maintain. So just to sort of round off those three bullet points, it will help you facilitate tracking of your relevant standards, documents, and progress against your targets. It will define the parameters of your sustainability plan as your organization evolves, more, I should say, redefine as you have done that already within step, um, steps five and six. Uh, and you'll also evaluate your yearly carbon emissions reductions and advancements towards achieving net zero. So going back to our screen share, uh, I will show you a little bit what that document looks like. So this is the opening page of our climate action tracker. Oh no, sorry, this is. <laughs> and um, we'll go through it, sort of show you a little bit detail how it works um, so there's five tabs there is the documents register the process the inventory boundaries the climate pathway actions and the climate pathway graphs so these five tabs will help you um, to track your the success of your um, sustainability strategy um, year after year so the first tab the documents register is a place for you to store all of your documents rele relevant to the delivery of the carbon reduction strategy that you have and it should be continuously compiled as your plan evolves so we have different headers here um, for you to keep track of all the documents that you're using to inform your plan and your initiatives the process tab here gives you a, it allows you to define a task list for the delivery of your carbon production strategy each, each year. So in column B, you can see there are a number of different tasks to be done. And each year you can check off who has done it and when they did it um, to make sure that you are keeping in line with um, your, strat your strategy tracking process. Um, the industry in inventory boundaries tab um, allows you to, to define the scope and boundaries of what will be monitored and tracked in each reporting cycle. And this is what we'll uh, have a go at filling in when we go into the breakout rooms. Um, these are dictated by scope that you outline in steps two and six and by your organization's financial and legal boundaries. So your organization could be a um, wholly owned operation, it could be a joint venture, it could be a subsidiary of something else, um, a ministry or something like that. Um, 
but I would read the definitions uh, and the definitions here and use the read more below, uh, read more button, sorry, here um, to understand um, what that means for your organization and how to define that. And then once you've figured out, that should help you decide what your um, operational control, your organizational control is. And that again will help you to understand what kind of things you will include in your inventory and what kind of things you will exclude um, from your inventory. This will all be done in these cells. Sorry, I've lost my cursor. In these cells here below. So your organization should choose um, a method for making for consistently uh, recording greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and that's where this will be recorded. And yeah, this tab will give you a clear structure to make your carbon reduction tracking in this next tab. So this next tab is the climate um, pathway action tab. And this allows you to track the initiatives that you make year on year. Um, let me just close these so it looks a bit it's a bit easier to see. Okay, yeah. So this allows you to um, track the initiatives and changes you've made year on year um, through all the operational uh, realms of your organization. So uh, if we start here, what you would do is you would assign a baseline year uh, in line with your sustainability plan. And you'd also assign your total budget. Uh, and remember, you can use your annual expenditure year on year to compare by tons of to compare tons of CO2 emitted per dollar spent. So this will give you an outline of how much uh, CO2 you emitted in comparison to your budget. This is especially useful if you're uh, running on event cycles. Um, then we would ask you to, to copy over your data from the baseline year. This might be in the carbon calculator, or you may have other data for your baseline year, um, but you would copy it out and include it here. Then you would do the same for any previous years here in K and L. Um, and you notice that in um, column A, they're the same activities that you have in your carbon calculators. So it should be relatively easy to include, you know, what those totals were for your baseline year in these cells here. And of course, same for your um, successive years. Then when we get to the current year, you'll want to enter the same data in a different way. You will expand out the tab. And here you have a number of different tabs, um, sorry, a number of different rows under each activity. Which, ex which allows you to label different activities of how you've reduced your carbon emissions for that year and to give a total for that year too in this section here. So this um, effectively by inserting these initiatives here, um, you will be able to assess, you know, which activities you've undertaken, have you completed them? Um, you can sort of quali uh, an assessment of how you've made a reduction to your carbon output and the measurement methods and the quality of that data can also be uh, included here. These, these uh, drop down roads are available for all the different activities um, that you see in uh, column A. And as you fill them out, it should um, align with the carbon that you have, um, the carbon totals that you have in your carbon calculator. So you can do this again for successive years. You can also um, add activities and ways that you might want to reduce carbon and simply label them as not complete. And this will help you plan for future years and to forecast um, what your carbon production might be for the next year 
or for consecutive years to come up to 2030, 2040 and 2050. So moving on to the next tab, what you will do is when you have uh, made those um, an understanding of what the actions are that you have used to reduce your um, carbon, you will then go into the climate pathway graph section. You will transpose uh, that data over to here in order to get a visual representation of where you are on your climate pathway. So um, if you look at the graphs here, the pathway is outlined to a simplified 1.5 degree net zero pathway using uh, the absolute contraction um, of all sectors method. And this is in line with the UNFCC's uh, recommendations of 50% by 2030 and net zero by 2050. So to get started on this tab, you'll want to erase all the example data that we've got here. We won't do that for now. Um, we want to be careful not to erase anything in the orange cells, as this is what creates your line of best fit against the UNFCC uh, net zero pathway. Actually, Isaac, uh, I might just jump in, jump, just jump in for a note there. Actually, through all of the templates, the calculator and otherwise, um, the format is when the cell is white, um, it's ready to receive user input. If the cell is colored, gray, orange in this case, or otherwise, uh, it's an output um, cell and doesn't, um, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be changed. Cool. Yeah, so that's an important thing to note. Um, so here what we would ask you or what we'd want you to do is to start with your baseline year um, and add in the data that you have for your total emission um, and your total emissions per dollar spent and you can record those along the top and also depending on how you've separated your operations if you have more than one um, climate pathway for different operations, say maybe you have one for events, you have one for um, office um, and for another one for, um, I guess, athletes, you could split these operations up and, and enter the data year on year as to what your um, organization's carbon consumption would be. You can then see in the graphs, just looking at these examples here. So for example, say our first operation is our events. Uh, we started getting a baseline in 2018, which was 4,000 um, tons of CO2 emitted. And then we've been trying to make our reduction on year. Um, and every year we've been getting a, li a little bit less and a little bit less. As you record this year on year, you'll be able to see a line develop and you'll be able to see where on the journey, whether you're in line with being um, with the UNFCC targets or whether you still have some way to go. And you'll be able to then compare operation by operation where you're having having successes, and where perhaps you might need uh, a little bit more attention on how to get that um, carbon down, where some extra initiatives may be required. Um, these visualizations can also be included in your reports when you come to reporting um, and having this data here um, will help whichever, um, I guess, de designer or author of your reports, it will help them to um, create e even more in-depth visual visualizations um, if you if it's so required. Um, at this too with the Climate Pathway Actions tab. Um, so that's a bit of a whistle stop tour. Again, uh, we've, got, we've gone through it very fast and we'll allow for questions in the breakout rooms. Um, but just before we go into these breakout rooms, just a word on um, scope uh, when you're counting your carbon. So when it comes to counting carbon, there are two important things to remember. You need to stay specific to your organization. Um, so, for example, let's take this example. If you're in a, a race in a velodrome versus a coast-to-coast -coast race of the, of the United States, 
um, you might want to take different things on your bike. You're going to need to consider very different things, but either way, you're going to want to keep the weight down as much as possible. So the idea here is that, you know, we both we might still have different things that we want to, um, that we might be considering, but the overall goal is to keep things down as much as possible. So make sure you're only counting carbon in the areas um, that is necessary. Um, but make sure you're, carp you're counting as, as much as possible. Um, we also need to keep our calculations relevant to our issue standards and goals um, and our control and influence and our vision. Um, and that's why in this breakout session, we'll be looking at the inventory's boundaries and how we can keep um, our scope in mind and how we can keep our scope, our mission scope aligned um with the relevant um things we need to track so we're going into our breakout rooms um it's time for that practical application again to get familiar with the um climate action template hopefully it makes uh, a lot more sense once you're in there um but today we're going to have a look at the um, boundaries and scope tab um which we touched on um just in the middle of that demonstration so for now don't worry about the organizational control element um i think it's it's important to understand that that's um that's a decision you'll have to make uh, on your own reading we just want to think want you to think about the different operations and activities in your organization and how your noc might define the limitations of what you track so as you saw, there are already some examples in the template um, and we have a facilitator on hand to discuss with you um, how you can set these boundaries. So without further ado, um, if you could split us back off into the breakout rooms, that would be great. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back. Apologies, my microphone's on mute then. Um, but yeah, um, really interesting. Some questions there in the breakout room. Um, we had uh, one question in my breakout room about whether, um, you know, would we use this tracker sort of month by month? Um, you know, we have an event in the middle of the year. Could we use it just for that event? And the answer is, yes, you could. You could, you could use the carbon tracker and use the formula in here to record that specific event. But what we would encourage you to do is to record all your events over the year and then maybe take a, um, a measurement of your total expenditure um, per uh, kilogram of CO2 emitted. And then by doing that, you can weigh up how much carbon you're emitting by the amount of activity you're doing. So it, then your activity isn't necessarily accounting for how much carbon you're emitting. It's a case of how much carbon you're emitting per dollar spent uh, within that year. So that is, um, one way you can do it. I don't know if there was any um, other questions or any other points on on that. No. Uh, we I mean, I guess... did Isaac. Sorry to interrupt. But we did have a discussion with the uh, Spanish NOC. Uh, they are finalizing their um, Tokyo uh, measurements. And there is a discussion also for the Olympic Games that the IOC will cover like we'll compensate all of the uh, Olympic, the, uh, the games emissions. And so for the NOC is also, because it is a challenge to calculate the delegations, it's a lot of emissions, but if the IOC is planning to do that, and then the NOC in theory, don't need to worry about the travel of their athletes, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so they can set those, uh, those uh, the, the scope properly and to to set up their strategy so a lot of things need to be cleared out uh, in the in the years to come so the industries can set up their scope properly yeah yeah for sure that's a really interesting point go on damien sorry yeah i mean that's a perfect example of the inventory boundaries tab right um you would say that in, a, in an epic year um the uh, inclusions are the operations of the noc 
but excluded are the athletes because that's covered under the um, IOC in the Olympic year. Uh, so that would be a very, very good example as to, you know, how important it is to uh, to define those uh, and state the inclusions and exclusions because that wouldn't necessarily be obvious to an external auditor or even maybe to fans and followers. So it's really important to, uh, uh, you know, and you would be referring when you're doing the communicating and reporting at the end of the period, uh, you would be referring back to this tab going, you know, someone will be referring back to this tab and making some public statements explaining what was included, what was excluded and why. For sure, yeah. It's just so you, yeah, so you can be straight on what exactly it is um, that you are measuring, and so that there's no confusion about, you know, whether your, um, whether your whether what your numbers are representing. Um, we have a question from Enoch from Zambia. Good to see you back with us. Hi Isaac. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, so um, as you have mentioned, I'm joining from Zambia, and um, my question is just um, in relation to the two box. Um, I saw there a tab while I also calculate for waste, and I was wondering, uh, does the two box also allow for converting the quantities to like uh, its carbon equivalent, or everything is just done in carbon? I can maybe answer that, Isaac, if you like. So, um, uh, CO two E in the two box. Uh, um, tabs and, and um, calculators, but also trackers, represents carbon dioxide equivalent, um, not carbon dioxide emissions. Uh, so carbon dioxide equivalent uh, brings together all of the um, six major greenhouse gas emissions. Um, if you dig into there, there's actually a tab or a couple of tabs on the calculator. Um, the previous spreadsheet we were looking at that describes that in more detail. Um, and typically corporate protocol requires you to report individually and the total of all six greenhouse gas, um, um, uh, key greenhouse gas emitters um, or greenhouse gases. Uh, we actually have totaled them, um, but you can certainly, there is the ability to split them out into methane, uh, et cetera, if you want as well. But uh, yes, all six are included. Uh, and you can choose again those factors if you wanted to calculate them individually or, or just um, the overall total. But that's a great question. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, and just as a, ca uh, a caveat as well, there is a waste tracker um, to help you be able to track your waste consumption. And that's also available in the step seven uh, resources as part of those 11 extra trackers. Um, do we have any more questions? <clears throat> Uh, can I ask a question? Yes. Um, uh, is there any um, uh, connection between DEFRA, um, DEFRA <laughs> um, uh, conversion factors and uh, uh, GAG protocol conversion factors? Are they the same? They don't. They are not connected. Uh, what's I, the... I, I I can answer that if you like, um, okay. Sophia. So in fact, they, um, when we say, when we say uh, GHG protocol, um, mm -hmm. uh, which is the internationally recognised or the DEFRA factors, we're referring to the same uh, protocol. Um, however, DEFRA is uh, maybe specific. Just the only specific sector specific um, factors in, in DEFRA relate to the um, UK electricity um, and uh, any factors related to that uh, and UK water. Um, however, the um, when we say the DEFRA, the UK GHG protocol or the GHG protocol, it's, it's exactly the same thing. And this is really the kind of international standard, if you like. Uh, there will be a few national exceptions whereby you probably want to, if you're in Spain, if you're in France, wherever you are, you might want to use and probably should use your own um, uh, intensity metrics for electricity uh, and maybe for water use, which would be less important. Um, but otherwise, the um, DEFRA and UK GHD are the, uh, it's the same. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> it's uh, important information for us. <laughs> Good to hear, good to hear. Brilliant, all right, okay. So I think we um, are running a little behind. So what I will do is um, introduce the next section, which is the 
anecdote. And today we have uh, Spain NOC ready to tell us a bit about how they tracked their emissions uh, and how they tracked the success of their sustainability program. So um, without further ado, um, I will allow them to present. Hi, thank you, Isaac, and good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to present first the, the well, my name is Emmanuel Parga, I'm Director of Marketing, Sustainability and Human Resources at the Spanish NRC. We start all this process uh, back in June 2017, and uh, since then we have been, uh, uh, you know, doing a lot of work. Uh, first of all, understanding of the carbon, foot, uh, carbon footprint emissions and the different scopes, et cetera. Well, now at the end of 2022, we sign a scope for climate action in back in 2019. And we have the pledge to reduce by 50% our carbon foot emissions in one, two, and three scopes, and uh, to be net zero by 2040, okay? So, uh, all this is a result of our ex, um, sustainability strategy. So if you can play the video of the nine lines that we are applying to our internal and external operations, and the results is one of the, of the well, let's go with the video and then we will continue. Since the beginning of time, mankind and nature have lived in perfect harmony. But in the last few decades, this balance is changing. We are facing one of the biggest challenges to humanity. It is time to reinforce our values, raise our principles. Because Olympism has always been more than sport. It's willingness to improve, perseverance in adversity, fighting for the gold. At the Spanish Olympic Committee, we aim to reach high. Our goal is to fight for a better world. And we do it following these nine strategic sustainability lines. We believe that sport is the best means to adopt an active and healthy lifestyle. The way you consume defines yourself. At the Spanish NOC, we use only renewable energy. We promote sustainable mobility in all our operations reducing CO2 emissions and minimizing our carbon footprint. It is unnecessary to use natural resources indiscriminately. We consider that waste can be a resource. Sport has a unique power to inspire change. We use that power to raise awareness and train on social and environmental sustainability. We promote charity initiatives in sporting events and encourage the participation of our athletes in social causes. It is our priority to minimize sports water footprint and we work towards the optimization of the existing water resources. We believe in digital transformation as the best driver for sustainable model, making better and more with less resources. Sport as a tool for women and girls empowerment. It's a matter of fair play. Olympic values will help us reach the best version of ourselves. Between all of us, we have to change the rules of the game. No one said this would be an easy race, but running it together is a must. Shoulder to shoulder, side by side, victory after victory. Spanish Olympic Committee, the best race doesn't leave a footprint. This is our claim we are sustainable sport and this is our video and I forgot to introduce to you Inigo Rueda is a member of my team and is the one who is dealing every day with the carbon footprint calculator etc. So Inigo just say hi to the, to the people here. Hello everyone. Um, so this is, uh, we, we started uh, calculating our carbon footprint and at the very beginning was not very um, easy. Uh, this is our pledge, the sport for climate action, reducing 50% in uh, 2030, scope once two, and net zero by, by 2040. And this is the first slide I would like to show to you. 
Uh, the next one, please. Um, in the first column, you have a scope one, two, and three, and we have a scope one and two um, added in this line, a scope one plus two with no uh, um, between brackets two. I will explain you that. Um, as you can see, uh, we have many not available calculation yet in scope three because we, we, we have been collecting all data and we have started in 2018. So after in the scope one, for example, you go other fuels, car fleet and air conditioning gas. In air conditioning gas, you see that in, in black, more um, um, dark in 20. 21, we had a storm, uh, a snow storm in Madrid, and we had an important leak of our gas of the aircon. And that's supposed that we create, we generate the 141 tons of CO2 that, that week, okay? That was an exceptional issue that we have. Um, uh, compensate. I mean, we have uh, not calculated, not included in our calculation because that was an exceptional due to a natural effect. So in the scope one in 2018, we had a, a tons of total five tons, almost six tons. And now in, um, in um, 2022, we have 7.38, okay? Um, we have increased that, why? Because the car fleet, as you can see, we have increased our uh, emission safe car fleet because during 20 and 21, as there was no public transportation, uh, not many public transportation for, for our operations, some of our, of our staff, um, precisely our president, decided to drive his car. Okay, so he we are using uh, our cars much much more than in the past. And I tried to figure out where the data. I have the data over here. On here, we have increased uh, the use of our cars uh, by. Mm, 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 what was that? I forgot. Oh, yeah, almost 25%. We use our car 25%. That is why we have increased by 20, almost 25%. Okay, uh, between 20, 2022, uh, regarding 2018. In the scope of two, as you've seen in the video, in August uh, 2021, um, we started to reduce, no, in, in August 29, sorry, 2019, sorry, we started uh, to use only renewable energy. So in uh, 2018, we generated 100, a little bit more than 100 tons per year. Uh, now we produce zero. That generates that scope one and two we have reduced almost 23% uh, of our baseline of 2018. So if we consider just scope one and two, we have already achieved our or surpassed the commitment of reducing 50% our carbon foot emissions, uh, the carbon footprint in by 2030, and we are in 2022. We do not consider that those scope one and two will increase as we will continue uh, to consume renewable energy. And this is the, the, the heaviest uh, um, um, uh, number, the, the highest number of uh, carbon foot emissions in scope one and two, okay? If we go to a scope three, we have uh, divided this in different lines, as you can see there, uh, flights, train, and hotels, the, the three first, refers to the, um, our staff operations. 
I mean, if we go to a meeting or we, if we go to the visit to the IOC or we go to a meeting of the uh, ANOC, for example, okay, or we go to visit our partners, etc. cetera. Uh, then the staff mobility, the fourth line is uh, what we are doing. How is the staff mobility uh, from our home to uh, the office, okay? And there you can see we have several numbers. We had the problem with the first lines, flights, train, hotels, because we have uh, our travel agency, Corte Ingles, have a system that provide us all the old kind of data. And in 2019, he started including the carbon, foot emission, carbon footprint emission um, generated by flight, by trains, and by hotels, okay? But in 2021, they had a problem with their uh, software or whatever, and we have no data. So we have the data in 2020 and 2022. And you have seen that we have reduced uh, compared flight and train uh, in 2020 and 2022. That's why we have increased in um, car fleet. But this is a not very comparable year because we had the pandemic and the lockdown. So those two years are really weird to consider as a uh, great, um, you know, reduction or you know, whatever. We 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 don't want to rely on that. Staff mobility, uh, on the other hand, we have reduced, yeah, as you can see, in 2021 compared to 2020, because of the we started to 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 work uh, remotely. Okay. So um, now, as you can see, in, um, in 2022, we have not the data yet. We have not made the calculation because we have the data. So we can provide you with this. And regarding our um, sport operations, we have divided in Olympic Games and other games because we have the winter and summer Olympic Games. Between those, uh, the Spanish NOC, we have um, a lot of difference of our delegation. The summer for us is important. Winter is very low activity. So we are calculating for, for us, Beijing was not a very big issue. We have calculated uh, the Olympic Games in Tokyo, uh, and those were a very, a very weird uh, games because most, uh, well, there was no visitors except athletes and um, the very reduced delegation. So we have no, um, uh, all the um, sponsors, uh, many of the staff of uh, the Spanish NC remain in Madrid, was covering from, from Madrid, the games, etc. So we cannot see that as a baseline, okay? And we have not data of uh, Brazil. <laughs> So uh, we will compare Beijing were, were really weird games also. We, so we will see Paris as a normal, um, uh, we are on the name, so I go very fast. Other, is, other games is very important. All those games apart from the Olympics, like Mediterranean, World Games, uh, European Games, etc. textile, is a very important issue for us. Knock events is not that event important for us. And other suppliers. And the next slide, the next slide is the same thing, but compensated. Okay, so you see in 2020, 2021, and 2022, that is compensated. Most of our scopes are compensated by the uh, by the IOC because they give some awards and the Olympic Games winter and summer will be compensated by the organizing committees. The, ra the rest is not compensated. So we start next slide please to uh, an Olympic forest uh, project, which is the Spanish Olympic forest. And, and then in order to compensate all those uh, carbon em emissions, next slide please, these are our partners. 
And this is what we have, we will achieve. We will share that with the city halls that were aware of the um, uh, Spanish Olympic Forest. There are five uh, cities and we will have 1,775 uh, tons uh, for the next 30 years that we will be allocated in the different carbon footprint, carbon footprint emissions that we will generate, okay? And um, it's for a period of 30 years, all those emissions that we generate in 2022, we will allocate this uh, um, Olympic uh, forest. Um, I'm finished. Sorry, because it, it took me um, more than expected, but it's not easy to, to explain Scope one, two, and three, when you have a uh, lockdown, uh, not comparable data, uh, different years with different activities, like for example, Olympic Games years, we cannot compare with other years, like we don't have those. Uh, well, yeah, you understand what I mean. All those not. No, for sure. Yeah. But it was, a, it was a very good presentation. All, all, albeit um it was it was great to see you know how you also how you, you know reducing the carbon and then also um taking the the steps to you know alleviate um the, the carbon for the next 30 years and i think that's definitely the what we should consider that you know it's the difference between net zero and carbon neutrality you first have to make the reductions and then you have to um see where you can plug the gaps um with your I guess Olympic but at but... the end of the day, I, I it's like we cannot reduce some of the um, some of the um, emissions. Like for example, mm -hmm. if I go to if I, if I need to go to Paris, the carbon uh, emissions will be much lower than Los Angeles because Los Angeles is far away. Yeah. So I cannot pair Paris games with Los Angeles game because um, it's. it's so this is the the key point that we we want to solve at the end we will rely on the um, reductions that our suppliers will do like iberia for example of the trade or the textile manufacturers and we will re re rely on those but if we have to go to los angeles we have to go to los angeles okay I cannot send those by balloon in a balloon or no no in a sailing sailing boat. Okay. So yeah, for sure. this is our we will work I, um, on compensation. We will work on I compensation. Am Manuel, I'd just like to congratulate you. Thanks. Obviously, you guys have been putting a lot of work into this, and I'll just be really quick. I've got a whole bunch of comments here, but um uh, I'll just go through them and um take them as they as they fall. Uh in terms of the refrigerant um and the natural effects. Um, uh, you guys still own that. Um, no one else owns that. So uh, uh, obviously, it's it's an anomaly in your account. In, in, you know, it's an exceptional event. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, you know, the the NOC owns that and should um, declare that uh, as it is. Uh, in terms of the renewables, I'm not sure what factors you guys are using, but even renewable energy is not zero. Um, renewable energy, depending on the on the um, on the source, whether it's hydro, wind, or solar, has a has a has a has a factor actually. Um, so uh, uh, you should guys should look into that. The radio irradiated. When you think about um, uh, airline factors and travel, um, be careful um, because, as you say, a lot of um, travel um, companies and agencies now are providing factors if they come directly from the IC. AO, um, the International um, Flight Aviation uh, Association, they typically exclude and do not include radiated forcing, which represents 50% of the footprint. Uh, so be very careful with, uh, with regards to externally sourced uh, aviation factors. They can be 50% less or half of the actual footprint. Um, You've done a great job in, in, in representing the uh, challenge uh, for any, any organization as scales of operation changes from one year to the next. Um, so Isaac referenced, uh, you know, one way of looking at that is kind of dollar spend versus tons. So you can compare 
something is not like for like, but you can also do that through footfall, through the amount of athlete activity. Maybe you're sending, you know, you have a successful Spanish year and you're spending a hundred athletes to to Los Angeles, and then maybe you know next year you've got a less successful and you're and you're sending twenty to another venue. You could consider dividing your activity and your footprint per athlete activity as well. Um, moving on, great to see the remote working. Um, that's obviously a great way that we've all reduced our, our inputs. And you can actually also take into account um, remote working in terms of the, the uh, you know, the, the footprint of people working from home. There is a way of doing that through the Qantas um, uh, remote workers tool. Um, baseline year, obviously, and choosing one which is consistent and kind of represents a real baseline. You mentioned that and the challenges with the COVID year. Um, and then sustainable sourcing, uh, exactly, even though we, let's say, we have to go to Los Angeles, uh, this is the opportunity to reach out to our suppliers, whether they're clothing or otherwise, and ask for better products. Um, I think what you represent there is, again, the responsibility of the entity who is purchasing these, uh, these, uh, these products and services to find the very be best ones possible. So just a whole bunch of comments there. Well done. And uh, thank you, Isaac, as well, for setting this up. Thank you for your comments. Very valuable. Thank you, Damien. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Um, so I guess now we are uh, about 10 minutes over the allotted time for this uh, webinar, but we do want to leave the floor open for any questions that you might have um, and to, yeah, to, I guess, facilitate a bit of a, an environment where um, you can sort of speak to the interventions that you have been making at your own NOCs, again, continue that conversation um, that we've been having. Um, so if there's anybody who um, wishes to make a comment or ask a question, um, just stick your hand up now. However, if not, we can round up the session considering the time. Um, okay, brilliant. So let's round off um, our session for today. So um, just looking at what our um, objectives are and what we've covered. Um, we should now have an understanding of the trackers and how they can contribute to effective monitoring. Um, we've also made a bit of practical application um, to tracking climate action results against all three scopes and made application to that carbon calculator, understanding how our carbon calculator works. Um, we've seen how our tools can assist in transparent communication with our stakeholders and we've heard from Spain NOC of how they've assessed monitored their own carbon progress uh, and some of the steps that they are taking um, for to reach net zero. Um, so yeah I guess I will we'll hand it over to Damien now to wrap up and give you some information on our next webinar. Thank you guys. Thank you, Isaac and Andre and everyone here. Obviously, this is a very dense topic and I would just say that um, this is really one space which, while it's very important, it is also the space where you probably have the most resource in terms of, um, you know, uh, tools um, and even finance, um, uh, which is available to you. And so definitely IOC and, and, and Julian, the Solid Solidarity team have uh, additional resources and tools available to you in this space. If you are taking it on, um, you know, internally, then the toolbox is absolutely something which, uh, which, is, um, uh, which is worth uh, considering. Um, and again, Isaac um, and the rest of the team is available to you here if you want to dig into that in more detail. Um, thank you very much to Juan Manuel and the Spanish NOC. The next workshop is on the 15th of March, where we will complete the full series with uh, reporting and communicating. Um, so both internally and externally and to the standards. Um, and uh, yeah, we will be joined. We'll hopefully showcase at least three NOCs on that final session. We'll also be joined by Julie Duffus again from the IOC. Um, and yeah, thank you all. Um, there will be, this is all recording. It's, it's available on YouTube and we'll send that back out to you. And over to Andre or Gustavo just to wrap up.
Yeah, thank you very much, Damien. Uh, also, thanks to the team, to Isaac, uh, to Ingrid, Amy, and of course, to Manuel and the Spanish NOC for the presentation. Uh, yeah, as, as Damien said, uh, we will send out the slides very soon along the links to the recording that are available on YouTube, on our Anok YouTube channel. Uh, also, a small reminder, since we have received some emails, if you want us to add somebody to the distribution or communication distribution list uh, for sustainability, uh, just email us to events at anocolympic.org. And yes, last but not least, if I can ask everybody, like almost a tradition to, to put on their cameras to take one group photo, that would be great. And that's a nice way to finish off uh, the fourth ANOC Sustainability Workshop, well, ANOC, the Toolbox Sustainability Workshop. So if you can switch on your cameras, whoever wants to be on the picture, I will just give me one second. Okay, so okay, I need to save it one second, and I will take a second one. Perfect. So thanks very much. Thank you all and hope to see you uh, next month as you said if you have any questions you can direct the questions uh, to damien and his team or to events at anogolympic.org and we will forward uh, as well the questions good, good luck for the boat there uh, guys good luck in south africa and the continuation of the race as well thank you Bye. thank Bye. you so much Bye. Have a good day, everyone. You Thank you so much. Thank you and have a good day. Thanks. Gracias. Thank you. Gracias.